What's up guys, Aaron back with you here from Miller's Off-Road. One thing that we're trying to do is throw in some extra videos, these behind the scenes videos working on our machines. So let me show you what I've got cooking today. This is my Kawasaki Brute 4750 2020 model. Um, and for the longest time, if you've noticed in my videos, I have ran my Rotopax fuel tank right here on the front. I hate the way it looks. That's why oftentimes I put like a black bag over it or something just to hide it. I don't know, it just doesn't look good to me. Don't like the way it looks on the front of the rack, especially in the videos when I'm sitting here and filming. Uh, and then a lot of times in the back, I'll have my Flex Stack Pack cooler that I've built and it works pretty well, but we haven't really used it a whole lot for um, cooling sodas and all of that stuff, mainly because Matt and Josh's bikes our Can-Ams, and they have that awesome Lynx rack system, and I badly wish I had that. So today, I am going to actually upgrade my rack to something a little bit unique. So this is my Rotopax I've had for quite a while. It's been great, a little two gallon Rotopax. This is the Rotopax storage container, and I just got it in, and I think I'm going to be using this to replace that flex stack pack storage container. Let me see, how do you open this thing up? It's stuck. All right, let me put the camera down. Okay, there we go. Got it opened up. Not a ton of space, but enough space to carry, I think, what we need to carry. Um, you can stuff a lot of things back in these holes here. So, you know, a lot of times we use this for like candy, gloves, extra batteries, battery pack charger, just lots of random stuff. Somebody needs extra storage on their machine, and that guy's gonna be me since Matt and Josh, they're the guys that have the awesome coolers, and we just don't typically drink that much when we're on the trails because we rarely ride in the, the hot summer heat. So it seems like we'll each drink maybe two waters and a soda a piece, something like that when we're on the trail. So not that much. And then a Lunchable, a couple beef sticks, something like that. So the rest of it can go in this dry roto packs. What I'm gonna do today though, is I'm going to mount, this is the universal mounting plate for roto packs. And I hope, 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 I have not tested any of this. I hope to be able to mount both of these on the back of the machine, something like that. Um, I really don't care what orientation. I mean, this would be a little nicer if they were mounted like that. Um, I don't see why I can't do it that way. I, I, I'd like to have them mounted like that, I believe. I think that would be a little bit nicer. Um, so I'm gonna try to run you through the process of how I do this. I'll try to film as much as I can, um, take you through the parts that I'm gonna use to hopefully accomplish this. All right, so this Rotopax universal mount bracket, whatever you want to call it, it came with these fasteners. I don't know how well they're going to work, um, but I'm going to try them. Basically, it's, it's almost like a wing nut, but for the bottom of your rack. So it comes with all this hardware. So see what that looks like right there, and then a couple of square nuts and screws. So I don't know. I got to figure out where I want this mounted in accordance with my roto pack. So I really just need to figure that out first. So I'm going to go ahead and mount these roto packs mounts to the universal mount. <laughs> That's a lot of mounts, isn't it? There's one. And these are off-branders right here. Um, I think Rotopax wanted a pretty good lick extra for theirs. And to me, it's the same thing. So yeah, these, um, these are from different companies. But so far, I can't tell that there's any difference in them. This one looks larger because I've got it unscrewed. But um, I didn't want to have to send this one back for various reasons. I had bought it trying to accomplish something a little bit different. So, and fortunately the key somehow fits uh, both of them. So that's a nice bonus. 
wrong way. Nice and tight. Oh man, that's tight. Very good. All right, now I gotta kinda level this one up or even it up. I'll tell you what's nice is this plate, the powder coating on it looks almost identical to the powder coating on my rack of my quad. So that's kinda nice. All right, now that I've got, okay, there we go. Now that I've got those mounted, uh-oh, we ran into our first snag. Might be able to flip this around like this. Maybe it's longer one way. It is, it's longer one way. It's gotta go like that. Okay, so that's it right there. That's beautiful. I was kind of wanting it the other direction. I think it'd be easier to open, but yeah, that's not gonna be possible. Okay, so we put it like this. Not a big deal, I can live with it. It's still gonna be super nice. Man, that's nice and sleek, compact. I'm just not a fan of those massive, giant storage containers on the back. They just, they're so freaking big. I don't know, I just, I don't like them. I don't like the way they look. I'm particular like that. All right, I think I'm done with these for now. Okay. All right, so let me kind of show you. Let me try to show you what, what we got going on here. So this is a pretty interesting system, the way it works. One thing I don't like is how long the screws are, but I understand this is universal. So you know what? I can cut those off. It's not a big deal. But uh, I think this is gonna work really well. I don't have this even tightened up yet and it's already not moving. I don't see any reason to put more than those two clamps on here. Um, that's gonna work really, really well the way they've got this designed. So you can see I need to let some of this off to kind of even that up. Same for this side, I've tightened it a little bit too much, but I think this is gonna work great. We'll see what happens. So this is sticking out just slightly. And you know, I like to squeeze through some pretty tight areas out there in the woods. So I don't know about that, but I don't think I'm gonna improve on it. That's the thing. Because of where the bars are on the rack, I just don't know that I can improve on that very much. So I think I'm gonna leave it alone. I think I'm gonna tighten those up and accept it. Um, unless I'm just missing something. I don't see how, yeah, that's just not gonna fit there like that. Um, no matter what happens, you have to have, because this is, I've got more meat on this side than this side, so interesting enough. Now, I could do that number right there, and then just this would be sticking out, and that's just barely, I mean just barely. Same with this one, but I don't like the thought of my, the nozzle tilted down, which these do seal pretty good, but still, I guess I could do it, run it like that. I got this old GoPro mount on here I need to take off. But man, that does look good. And as easy as that was to install, plenty of room. Let's see if I can still take the seat off. Yes, I can, no problems there. So I don't see myself changing this. Yeah, I think that's gonna call it. <laughs> I, I, I just don't see improving on that any. And it looks so much better than having that big tall thing on here with the big armrest looking thing. I don't know, I just, I don't like that. I know that's just me personally, probably I'm the only one that feels that way. I just think this looks way sleeker, it's flatter. I just like stock, you know? I like to be untethered, I don't like a ton of weight. One thing about this machine that is, kind of works hand in hand with the way I've got this set up is it's light in the rear end. 
This machine is heavy in the front end. Now the Can-Ams, that's one thing they excel at. They're just heavy all over the place. These Japanese bikes, the Suzuki Yamahas and Cowies, they are all light in, light in the back. So all this time riding has taught me that it's not necessarily a good thing to put more weight up here. I'm always thinking because we're climbing, you know, I want the front end to stay down and this thing does pop a wheelie pretty easy, but you know, give it a little throttle, man, it, it'll stand straight up, no problem. But I think I need more weight in the back just for ride comfort. So I think this is actually gonna play into my favor right here, but. All right, let me, uh, let me get these locked down and I'll show you, I'll show you what the final, final look is. I'm gonna play with them for just a minute. So before, those were sticking way down and I could just see it, my plastic moving and rubbing a big hole. Not a big deal. Just cut the suckers off. To show you guys how these things work if you've never seen them before, you've got two different levers here. This one I'm spinning up. You, you keep spinning it upwards until you can turn the whole thing and then you can spin it down. And it just starts clamping down on that fuel tank and man, these things work good. So right there, I've just made contact on this one. So I'm gonna keep rolling. Really right there would be fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I'll give it one more turn. And then I have the key and the lock right here. And once again, this one key will fit both of these. So that's really nice. And you know, it's a little security thing when we're staying in a hotel at night. I don't want nobody stealing my stuff. So it's kind of nice that that's locked. Now you can't, you literally cannot remove that without the key. Um, so let's do this one. Let's see here. One more turn. That's good. That is locked down very nicely and the lock is right here. So, you know, I was hoping possibly that I would be able to, let's see here, how does this thing work? I'm still getting used to these, by the way. Should go in just like that. There we go, I wasn't lined up. Okay, there we go. So I was hoping that I would possibly be able to open this lid with it still locked down. That's not possible, but it's still gonna be faster and easier. I will say that, maybe not faster, but definitely easier than having a ratchet strap that could potentially and has come loose on the trails. I have lost my gas tank and my storage container. Um, not lost them, I felt them come off, but with this system, I dare say you could pick up the back of the bike like this. I mean, those suckers are locked in there. They're not going anywhere. It's really great system. These are both legit Rotopax brand containers. The mount is a Rotopax brand, but the actual hold downs are just cheap aftermarket, 40 bucks on Amazon, something like that. Um, no problems with them, they, they work fine. But that looks great to me. I'm very, very happy with the way this turned out. All right guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a comment down below what you would change about this configuration, if anything, if you like it. Uh, give me a brand of paint that I can paint that red gas jug black and get away with it. <laughs> I hate the fact that it's red. I hate it. I know you're supposed to keep them red, but um, I don't know. I'm thinking about painting it. Anyways, comment down below. Give me a thumbs up. If you give me a thumbs up, man, that helps the channel so much. Um, appreciate you guys. We'll try to do more of these videos in the future, kind of behind the scenes of our trail riding. See you guys on the next one.